What up gamers, I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dyson Dragons, we are going to be reviewing Alter Quest by Blacklist Games, designed by Brady and Adam Sadler. Now this is not the first experience we have with this system. This is the latest in the modular deck system, also known as the MDS system. Now I'm gonna to toss it over to Julie, Who's going to tell you more about the game itself? So this is a cooperative dungeon crawl that is intended for ages 14 and above. It plays one to four players in 45 to about 120 minutes, depending on the campaign and how long you take to make decisions and which route you take. And I yeah. guess the luck of the draw also on how things come up. Definitely. Our, well, we played an entire campaign. There have been uh, quite a few reviews for this that had dropped already. So... As we usually like to do, we went in depth on the game. Also, we tend to sometimes put something away and it takes a while to get back to the table. This time we decided to power through and it wasn't, uh, wasn't that difficult as we were having a good time with the game, but that's the only spoiler I'm going to give you for our forthcoming review. Now, what are you doing in Alter Quest? Well, you're going to be venturing across the land of Aridica that has just recovered from a war with the Thralls, well, in recent years, they are evil vampires, and there are these strange things called altars that are now appearing across the land, creating havoc. You'll be completing quests. Now you may play this as a one-off adventure, or you can play it as a series of interlinked adventures through an entire campaign that will actually lead you right into the expansion for the game. Now normally we actually discuss the ages of the game and we miss doing that. So Julie, do you think this is 14 plus or could you go a little younger with this? I think 14 plus is a good age. Yeah, I definitely would say that this is for a teenager. You may be able to go a little younger if you have someone in your house that's uh, you know, been playing games for a very long time, but you really need to work together. You gotta combo your cards. You need to get those game-breaking combos almost that will come out from using items, abilities, exhausting uh, maybe some allies if you control them in order to succeed. Now, did I miss anything? No, I think you're good. All right, what time is it? Time to grab our drinks. Grab our fellow adventurer. We're going to take it to the table one more time. Yeah, we completed the campaign, but let's play one more game just for fun. Now we're going to take a look at the components for Alter Quest. And just a reminder for those that are new to the channel, you can take a look down below in the video description. You will see some timestamps, so if you want to skip ahead, feel free. Now, the look at the components is going to be in two parts. I really like to give a close-up view. And there are a lot of components in the base game, so I couldn't get everything out here, so keep that in mind. And I'm gonna try to do this a lot faster than I normally do. So we will start with the rule book. And I do like how the rule book is laid out overall. We do have all the information that we need, a nice explanation as to all the cards, how they work. Then we get very much a clear explanation of player setup, as well as how to set up the game. Now you do have a nice turn summary on the back. You do have that as well on the hero cards. And in the back of the rule book, you do get the campaign rules. Now I do have some issues with regards to how some of uh, the rules are structured in terms of where they're placed in the rule book, but overall, Everything that you need to play the game is there and well explained. Now you also do get the story guide for the Out of Luxon campaign. So this will instruct you how to play the campaign in turn. Well, you have the rules in the rule book where this will take you through the campaign, tell you when to interact with the quest deck and when to go back into the appendix and read some of the story elements. Now the last thing we're gonna take a look at is the board. I get a feeling just because of how large it is, I may knock something over. So we're gonna start Moving across the components here, and let's get going. So these are the stairs. You're gonna be placing them in a room on the board to denote your starting location. Here we've got the four different colored traps, which will be related to the enemy decks. We have the damage tokens in denominations of one and five. These are the quest tokens. We have threat tokens here. Sorry, not quest tokens. Search tokens, threat tokens. This is the quest token. Now this is supply, which is a resource that you can use to roll more dice, heal yourself, represents finding, you know, maybe some weapons, potions, 
as you're going on your adventure. We have armor tokens that will absorb damage, your focus tokens that will let you do some more stuff, and then these action tokens just to remind you how many actions you've taken. You can flip them over once you're done. Now you will also receive these uh, proprietary dice. So you have the standard ones that have your focus and successes. You may also get the result of focus and success. You may also get the critical result, which will allow you to re-roll the dice, just like the other MDS games. Now, these are the altar dice, which represent different elements that the altar has in play. They're essentially the magic system for the game, and you will re-roll them once you use the effect. So for example, this is light, and this swirl is darkness. Now, I'll take a quick look at the easy to see stuff. So we'll look at these minis first for the features. Here we've got the weapon rack, which has a lot of detail. Not sure how you'd paint it because I'm not a painter, but I do think you can make something that would look really nice. Here is the mushroom patch. We've got the fountain. Now for those that are wondering maybe where our other feature elements, you're only looking as to what came in the base game. Really wanted to review the core experience as it is presently available on the Blacklist Games web store. We've got the alchemy desk here, the bookshelf, another very cool feature. We have the magic mirror and lastly the treasure chest. So these are all the different features. We of course also have the altar which will show up once it is revealed and the doors that you're going to be opening and keep in mind you have a finite supply of doors once you run out of doors you will no longer be able to reveal rooms so since we took a look at the features let's take a look at uh, the cards associated with them so each feature has a card except for the altar actually it has an altar found card which will then be discarded you've got the features so the locked chest, alchemy desk, tells you what happens when they activate on the quest turn, how you can also interact with them. So you have one for each of the features. Now with regards to the altar, you've got a different set of altar cards and these are gonna show up in the game. Well, one of them will show up in the game and you are going to shuffle them and randomly select one when you get started. Now, I don't wanna have any spoilers here, but this is the out of Luxon story deck. So you'll start the first card that explains how to use it and you've got some cool stuff that'll happen depending on the choices that you make. I'll take a look at the other cards that I've got stacked up here. So we've got the hero reference cards, double-sided for the villain turns as well. Then we have the search cards as well as the equipment cards. Now these only come into play if you are playing a campaign, but they're upgrades like armor, new weapons, See if I can find one of the trinkets. Trinkets that will also modify your abilities. Like as you can see, this increases your health value. You can also exhaust it using one of the altar dice that we have here in order to trigger an effect. Then there are also the search tokens, some that you may discard, some that you may have to use. Others are negative, for example, like draw the lurker. And the one that I'm looking at, for example, the quick route. You can use it to move up to five spaces or keep it and exhaust it to move up to two spaces. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with your search cards. So keep that in mind in, ter in terms of how you want to play the game. Now we're not gonna go through the decks in a lot of detail, but you do get six different missions. Now each deck is set up with the rules, then what you're gonna be doing during the game. They have their own specific cards related to the quest. They'll often have the quest deck, as you can see here. And then another deck that you're gonna be drawing from that'll help you complete your objective for the mission. I'm not gonna go through all of them. For example, with the hunt, you've got some specific rivals that you're going to be facing. There are some tokens for them. Then you also have the quest deck. And then these cards to help you find those rivals. Just take a quick peek at each of them. So as you can see, they all have their own resources and I had not resorted this one exactly. But you get the gist as to what I'm talking about. Now then we've got the four heroes. Also included in the game are the ally cards so that you may play with each of the heroes as an ally as well. They'll have an exhaust effect which will let you move and attack or do something else, as well as an altar effect that you can trigger provided the symbol is available. 
Let's take a look at Quilla, our mage. You've got their stats, their defense, their health, an exhaust effect that they can use the range of said exhaust effect. Then they will have their own starting uh, equipment. So runic scrolls that she can use as well as her harpy talons. Then she's gonna have different actions that are maybe spells, could be prayers. You can also get uh, feats which uh, do not count as actions. And, but you can play them at any time during the game. You also get a set of upgrade cards that you'll be using. So let's take a look at Quella's miniature. So once again, very detailed mini. These are definitely the most detailed ones that we've gotten from Blacklist Games. Here's Rowan's miniature, our Burry Lander. Take a look at his card. He's got rope and a knife. So action, he can throw some knives. Pretty cool. He can do some searching because of course he's, he's a thief. Then you've got these ongoing ones where for example, you can use them or keep them in your play area and exhaust them. These actions that are ongoing are similar to tactics from the other MDS games. And of course, you've got the feats, things that they can do, he can do as well. And then the upgrade cards, which will come into play during a campaign. Now here we've got Sedrin Highmore. Another cool mini, he is your cleric priest. So he can heal people. So again, you can see his stats. He's got this awesome trinket, which I really love during our plays. Search with a steel mace. Then he's got feats, well, actions that'll let him search. Prayers that can help uh, people succeed. You can even pull prayers back into your deck. You even got a nice magical range attack. So very cool character, as well as you can see his upgrade cards. And then lastly, that we're gonna take a look at with this section of the components, we've got Miren Duval. So her character sheath, she can actually pull enemies within range, being our armored knight. Her spice shield is really cool and can deal some damage to uh, characters, <clears throat> excuse me, that can really, really help out. She starts with a sword. She can also as search. She can do uh, some actions as she's a thrall that will let her heal herself. She's got an awesome battle cry that will damage people. Battle lust. She also has an attack that would even let her get multiple... Uh, Opponents, so, yeah, Furious Arc, and of course the upgrade cards. So there you have it, we've taken a look at the hero cards, the quest cards, the features. The last thing we need to take a look at here is the board. And I don't know if I'm gonna open up the whole thing. This, these boards are rather large, a little unwieldy, but I want to give you an example as to what the board looks like. So I'm not gonna open up the whole thing, but you can get the gist of the board here. So you're gonna have different rooms, You've got locations where features will spawn. Then you will have the shadow spaces, such as right here where the enemies will spawn. And when you start the game, you just pick any room to place the stairs. So not gonna open up the whole thing. The rooms are all just different shapes. You will not be using the edge of the board, at least not in the components that are included in the base game. So keep it right here. I'm gonna be right back and we're gonna feature the enemies for Alter Quest. Now we're going to take a quick look at the villain decks and threat decks for Alter Quest. So we'll start with Bulks the Belch Lord. Now each villain deck has an instruction card and an activate action you're going to take every turn. You'll also notice that they do have altar effects that are related to uh, appropriate elements. So frogs, frogs, water. Now if the villain deck is ever emptied, you will flip this card over as the villain now enters play. And on their deck of cards, they're gonna have different things that you're gonna have to do each turn, often resisting attacks from frogs or even just their presence, like this noxious presence. So your heroes or all the characters, meaning if you do have allies, will have to test in order to avoid taking damage. So this is the miniature for Balks the Belch Lord. Pretty cool. Love the way that he looks. Now we've got the threat deck for the frogs. Now this will explain how to use the threat tokens, give you a little bit of background about the frogs. You're gonna have different things that come up, such as frogling swarms, events, different enemies. You'll notice that the enemies are colored. That's why we've got these colored rings on them. You may also get the traps, which are represented by the trap tokens that we had earlier on in the video. Now, if you happen to get the stretch goals, you will actually have miniatures for all of these things, except for the events. 
So you get the idea of how it works. And you'll see that the frocks also have elemental, uh, well, alter abilities based on the appropriate element. So we'll take a look at the tokens, not the tokens, the characters. So I believe, I'm drawing a blank, it's not the Muxlinger. This is the Frox Raider. And one thing I do want to notice, to note each set, because there are multiple figures of each type, one for each color ring, or four color rings, you're gonna have a fifth one, which is used as a lurker, which we'll discuss in just a moment. So that one you will not be putting a base under. So this was the Raider. Here we've got the Muck Slinger. And this is the Frox Bogmancer. So next we've got Gert. Her active effect is the diamond, which I forget what element it is. You can see some of her cards spreading stench, so you must resist. She might have a thunderous stomp, pungent aura, so definitely just unpleasant to have her around overall. And then you can see her act, her card, where you've got her armor, so just her natural armor, her speed, and how she works. So. As you'll notice, there's no speed on bulk, so he works entirely differently than Gert. Take a look at her miniature here. Another nicely detailed mini. So, and her uh, threat deck are the Raglanders. Instructions how to use their threat tokens. And you've got their minis, the burner and the blutter. Their feeding trough for the traps. You've got the giant cannibals. And then the event, which is the curious odor. So we've got the burners right here the cannibals, and I don't know why, just completely blank, it's the blutter with the knives, I knew it started with a B, and then here's the mini for the Raglander blutter. Then last we've got Winora Morn, Let's take a look at her miniature first, here she is holding her baby, we've got the instructions of how to play her, plus her villain card, Then if you look at her deck, there's going to be different events that are going to be going on. Dinner preparations, she might attack us or bite us because she's a thrall. Sanguine tantrum, her baby might throw a tantrum. He might even come crawling at us and try to kill us. So, yeah, pretty scary deck of vampires here. Now we've got the instructions for the thrall's threat tokens. We have their event, Endless Thirst, and the minions, which are gargoyles. Their traps, the Banner of Morn, the Crimson Courts here, and the Feral Mother. So here we have the gargoyle miniature. The Crimson Quartz here. And then lastly, the Pharaoh Mother. So we'll take a look at these tokens before we get into the Lurkers. Now these tokens will represent Lurkers that are specific to the Showdown mission. And these tokens are actually for allies that we have in the game that do not come with miniatures unless you happen to have the stretch goals. Now, as I mentioned, there is the Lurker deck. So you'll notice that we've got one of each type of minion that can be spawned from this deck. The more expansions you have and the stretch goals, different enemy groups, the larger your deck of lurkers will be, or it can vary depending on the mission. For example, the showdown deck, you're gonna have all four of these characters added. And there you have it. We've now taken a look at all of the components for altar quests. Now keep it right here as I'm gonna teach you how to set up the game and then how to play. Now I'm gonna teach you the basics of how to set up altar quests. Now I just wanna highlight, I am using the bottom part of the board to store components. As you can see, this is quite the large game. So the setup is not gonna be ideal, but I will teach you what components that you need to get the game going. So you will need to select your character. You need to pick an ally if you're going to be playing with one, as this is a solo game and I'm gonna be teaching you how to play. I decided to pick Rowan Laughlin as my ally, and my hero is Cedron Highmore, the characters that I use during the campaign. Now we have the Raglanders and all of their miniatures that need to be taken out that are the threat deck. We will be facing off against Gert, who is our villain. We will also have our traps here from the stretch goals. I just decided to use them because they're a lot nicer, but you will need these four trap tokens if you just have the retail version of the game. Now you're gonna need your damage token, some doors, all of the different features. You will need armor tokens, supply, quest tokens, threat tokens, progress tokens, and search tokens. Now, 
You will also have your stairs. You can place the stairs anywhere on this board, as long as they go into the feature space of a room, just to give us the most room, we're gonna place them here. So you notice that the feature space takes up four spaces. There is the white and the gray. We'll explain what the difference between those are in a moment. So you will make sure that the feature sits in those four squares. And then you will place your heroes on the squares. You will also need to take out your hero card, because of course, what's a hero without their stats and abilities? Then you also need their starting items. After that, you'll want to make sure that you do not have any of the upgrade cards, unless you're playing a campaign and you're a few missions in where you will have earned them. Other than that, you're just gonna be playing with your hero's standard deck. You will need to draw four cards. So we've got one, two, three, four. So this is Cedrin's starting hand. Now we've got our turn order card here and our action tokens just to help us keep track. You will also need to have your focus tokens, which I just had off camera. I'll place them over here, right next to Rowan. So we've got everything else set up here. We have our feature cards, our search cards, the quest deck, the villain deck, the threats, the raglanders. You will also need your lurker cards. Now I'm not gonna have these on camera. Most likely they're not gonna show up in the teach, but uh, we'll explain them. Essentially you just draw them if the game requires you to. Now you also need to set up an altar in the quest area. So what you're going to do is shuffle the altar cards together. You will reveal one. In this case, we've got the unstable altar. It is active in the quest card area because that is when it will come into play and activate is during the quest phase. Now, we have our search cards, which will come up when we do some searching. We also have our feature cards. So this is everything that we need to do to get started with the base game. Now, each quest has their own setup. Now, I'm not gonna go over the flavor text. This is the search, as you can see here. This side explains how you set up. So when building the feature deck, you will shuffle together the altar found card and two other feature cards and place them at the bottom of the deck. Then we must remove each clue card from the quest deck, shuffle them together to create the clue deck and set that deck near the quest deck. So we're gonna have two stacks of quest uh, cards. I'm gonna place this, actually, you know what? I'm gonna move damage tokens over. Slide these things down. If something pops off camera, I apologize, but we'll keep that reference card right there. So as you can see, we have the search cards. We've got the events, other search cards, and these are the clue deck. So we will shuffle this together. And place it over here. So you know what, we should be okay so happy I made some room, but we can keep this here for the moment. Ah, not here. We're going to keep the reference card just down below right there. Ah, sorry. These two cards accidentally got mixed in. They're supposed to be the Raglanders, the Curious Odor. So we have our quest cards here. We've got our Raglanders, which we'll just shuffle up again. So we added the two cards. And we're just about good to go. Our objective for this is, uh, well, we'll find out. So we have to do the altar found. We've got the clue. So what does it tell us? There is one player quest token on this card. Each hero is on the stairs. The heroes will have won the game. At any time, a hero may discard any number of clue cards they control. And then there's a negative activate effect that will come into play. So clearly we must explore this area, find these clue cards in order to complete searching for the object. So one of the last things we need to do is take the altar dice and because it's just gonna look better on camera, I'm using the stretch goal ones as they're colored. So we're gonna get our starting dice that we can use in the game. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to have your standard dice ready to go as well. So there you have it. We're just about done here. We just need to get the altar set up so we, doesn't really matter in this case, as we're not gonna be going through everything. Shuffle up the last 
two cards in the altar deck, shuffle, well, the feature deck, sorry. And we just put that at the bottom and we are now all set to go. So there is definitely gonna be some things that are, are stacked are gonna be a little bit uh, unclear because as you can see, this is a big game, but the game is set up. As you can see, it's not that difficult to get everything in place and going. So now let's teach you how to play the game. So how do you play Alter Quest? Well, each character can take three different actions during their game. Well, during their turn, sorry, not during the game. Here you have the hero turn card, which tells you what you can do. You may move up to three spaces. You may perform the action effect listed on a card you control. So for example, the action effect of attacking on your steel mace. You may interact with something on the board. Now when they're interact shows up on a card it will tell you the range as well so if it says one well then you need to be right next to the item if it says three or four well you can be further away you may decide to draw one card from your deck to try to get more more cards with some better abilities you may discard a supply if you have one to rest and heal two damage or you may decide to channel which lets you gain one focus and change any one of these altar dice to a card to a, a symbol of your choice. And then once you've done all that, you will draw a card. Now, the cards in your hand can let you go beyond those actions. For example, feats don't actually cost uh, an action or anything, so you can play them at any time. But first and foremost in Alter Quest, you're gonna be moving around, exploring and opening doors. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna move one, two, I'm now in a door space. I will be able to complete my movement afterwards, but the first thing I need to do is reveal the room. To do that, I take one of the doors, and if I do ever run out of doors, well, I can't do any more exploration. That is the end of it. I will then draw a feature card, which is going to be the weapon rack. It is placed, if it is a large feature, in the four spaces that it will occupy, if for example, we draw on the magic mirror, and this was the room we'd open, it would only go in the white spaces on the board. Now the weapon rack will go into the quest area because as you will notice, there is an activate effect that you can use. We also have an interact effect as well that is for searching. We do need to be adjacent to it. As you can see, the range on the card is listed as one. So for the moment, I'm just gonna place it above the altar. It may go a little bit off camera, but what can I say? This is a big game. Next, we must draw a card from the quest deck and it will tell us what happens. So, weariness settles in. It could be some hex or it could simply be natural exhaustion. Whatever it is, it must be tended to if you hope to continue the journey. There's no time to make camp, so you must dig deep for the resolve to continue. You cannot rest until you find what you're looking for. So when you reveal, when revealed, this card is attached to the room's feature card. Each hero must either discard one supply or resist Four. Now, we can activate a hero adjacent to this feature, may draw a card from the clue deck, and then we get to discard a card. Well, that's not the greatest thing to have happen to us. We have our stat, so the red, resist red is might. I don't remember all the names for the stats. I should open up the rule book just to reference them, but it doesn't really matter, you, you get the idea. So we'll have to test. To make the test, I will have to roll two dice. Now there's one thing I do want to showcase here and it would have worked better in our favor if I could have activated Rowan is that I can activate him and he's got the ability to potentially gain a supply. Fortunately, we don't have the altered dice to allow him to do it, but you get the idea. So let's do the test. So unfortunately, at this point, we only resist two, meaning that we will take two damage. Now, when you resist, if you do happen to have any armor tokens, because you do suffer the damage afterwards, you may not use these to reduce damage. That is the case when you suffer or deal damage. Your care, or yeah, when you deal damage, as I said, uh, for example, this mace, you can exhaust to deal one damage, an enemy cannot block it, whether it's with armor tokens or their base armor value. So we've taken two damage. I can also complete my movement. I'm gonna move through the door. But before we're done revealing the room, we still need to go ahead and draw a threat card. 
So in this case, we get the raglan burner who goes into our threat area. This is the green raglan burner. So he will now show up in the shadow space, which is the area that's got that black crack. It's a little hard to see in that room. It's a little clearer here. So that is where the raglan burner is. Now, we probably want to try to heal ourselves. We could actually have potentially succeeded at this test because as you can see, we have the Star of Luna, which is something we could exhaust and you can exhaust and use the light ability instead to get a crit. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with these different abilities. Now, fortunately I don't have any great attack cards, but there's some different things that we could potentially do. Well, I think I want to heal the damage, but I also want to uh, try to attack this guy. So we've got Rowan over there. Let's show you how you would use your ally. So you would exhaust the ally and then you perform the effect on his card. He may move up to six spaces and attack using his agility or choose a figure within range to move up to two spaces. Now if, and we'll, change, we'll cheat just a little bit here to show you how this works. So if we had this symbol, we'd be able to gain a supply. So I'm going to use Rowan. We'll move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I could move adjacent. I don't have to. I could also move one, two, three, four, five, six. And keep range because you can see the range on this card, which is four. Now I could decide to have Sedrin move into range to attack. But with a three die attack compared to Sedrin's two die attack, I'm in a pretty good shape to just attack with him. So at this point, I'm gonna roll three dice to perform the attack. Now, I do get three success with Rowan. I could potentially, after he tests, if I want to try to kill this Raglan, which is not a bad idea, exhaust the Star of Aluna and roll the light die. But we'll do this as well, because he, well, let's, let's wait a second here. I'm gonna go back. So we moved in, we went to attack. We can also roll the altar die. So we do that, we roll it, we are able to gain a supply. Now, a supply can also be used by a hero to roll extra dice. In any case, we wanna to try to kill this guy. We got Brody through his armor. He's got one armor. So let's see what we can do if we add a crit. So we'll roll this, we gain a darkness. We do add a crit. Now. When you roll a crit, this symbol here, you get to roll again, which is great because we can now keep rolling. So we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five damage. No, not quite what we wanted, but still very good. So five minus one means that our raglan will take a total of four damage. So he's wounded. We're wounded, and that's not too bad, but it's not exactly where we want it to be. Now we could have done something else with the light, and let's just imagine that this was a second light symbol for, just so that we can show everything to you. If I'd wanted to heal, I could exhaust Cedron, as he's got an effect here with range of four, that lets every character heal one if he rolls the light effect, so teaching the game so there will be a little bit of cheating and fudging the rules, well, what's actually there, in order to show you a really solid turn because I don't want to go necessarily through a lot of turns in the game. So I've taken one action. You know, we've got a few other actions that I can do. Now, I am adjacent to our feature and I need to draw from the quest deck. So quite simply, what I'm going to do is I will hack so that's only on the activate. So I'm gonna to have to stay or end my turn near that so that when the activate effect on strange fatigue goes, I'll be in the right spot. It's gonna be a little tricky here. So what do I wanna do? I've got healing hands. Well, I can also potentially get focus. Can't forget here actually, I almost did. Rowan actually gained the focus from his attack because of the focus symbol. So we've got a few feats. The best one for me is going to be rousing him. So I will play this. It's going to be go off camera. It says test purple. And then for each success, I may choose a hero within range to gain a focus. Now, what would have been really cool is if 
I hadn't used this symbol to gain a supply, I could have done more, more stuff. So I did use this one. But let's imagine that we had a second one because I want to show you exactly how the cards work. So we could play this. Defeat. So two successes, I would gain two supply. I can now roll this to choose a hero to take an action, meaning I get an extra turn essentially. So to that extent, we want to potentially kill this Raglan burner. So I will attack him. So I will trigger my second action now only using the attack effect. Fortunately, that's only two hits. He's got one armor. Use him with five damage, but I can exhaust my steel mace. Use the effect that, that is there. Now the beautiful thing about that is by exhausting it, I can deal a damage which goes through his armor, defeating the Raglan burner. Now once you defeat a minion, you do gain a supply, and the minion will be removed from the board. Oh, I still have one action left that I can take. So I'm gonna move one, two. I couldn't move through Roland, but I do wanna end up adjacent to, to that for when the activate effects come in order to achieve my goal. Now we've completed our hero turn. We've taken three actions. So we must go through the threat turn. And with regards to the threat turn, I will imagine just for a second that the Raglan burner was still alive. So we would have to perform the activate effect on him. So we survived. We didn't kill him. I decided to still move away and disengage because it puts me where I need to be. Well, guess what? He's going to engage. So his range, so his movement is for his range is five. He doesn't even really need to move at this point. So he would be able to inflict on us five because he can engage and attack us. Now, if he was not able to do that, he would m move four to get as close as possible and then gain an armor token. So he's just straight up going to attack us and inflict five. Now, if we attack Cedrin, it's not really good because it's attacking agility. So we're not in a great position to defend, but we will try anyway. Roll the die. Oh, we got a crit. So we get to roll another die. So that is two successes that we have, minus one because it's an attack, three successes, we take two damage. Now, unfortunately, there is this symbol here, which means you can have to trigger his effect again, which means he will now inflict four on us and we gain a threat token. So next time any minion would engage, these threat tokens would trigger. So we now have to defend against four. Once again, it's on agility. So we do get a success and a focus. Now I can choose that to gain a focus or I can use it for defense. In this case, I'll use it for defense. That turns out to two successes. Three with the armor, minus one would be another damage to Cedrin. But taking a beating from this guy, that's why you, as you can see, you would want to kill the enemies as soon as possible. So that would be the activation of a threat. Next, you need to go to the villain activation. So what you would do is you read the activate effect of every card in the villain area. So each hero must either, the, either discard an armor token or resist three on blue. Then you would also trigger this. And then even if the minion's not there, so we're gonna remove the raglan. We're gonna take off all that extra damage because I did kill him. And this gives me a good opportunity to explain what happens with Gert. So first things first, we gotta resist three on blue. We roll three die for Cedrin, and that is each hero. So if it said each character, Roan would be affected as well. So I resist two, spend the focus to resist three because the armor will not count for this. I do not take any damage. Now, any minion that was alive, so that Raglan, If they were still alive, we would roll a symbol and they would gain an armor token. But we did defeat them. Already removed the mini, going to remove the card. No matter what happens, if the symbol is available on a card, you must trigger it. We must now draw a villain card. 
So War Squeal. Each character must either discard one armor token or resist four on purple. And that says each character. So the discard for the villain cards is gonna be off camera. That means Rowan must resist as well. So we'll roll. So that is a total of one, two. You can spend his focus to turn it into three, meaning he will luckily only suffer a damage. Seven will try as well. Gets a crit. We're at two successes. Another crit. Three successes, four successes, and a focus. We're in good shape. Now we must move down to the search card. And we're going to activate each card in the area. This one states, each hero who controls a clue card must either discard a focus for each clue card they control or resist three on intelligence, the half moon stat. There's one P quest card, so one per player quest token on this card, you'd have to draw a threat card, so one of the Raglander cards. In this case, I do not have a clue. Nothing will happen. Now, we do have the altar that will activate. It is the unstable altar. So each hero must discard either a focus or to suffer one damage. I will definitely discard a focus. Actually, at this point, suffering one damage is not that bad. We've got some different things that we can do. Now we've got the activate effect on the weapon rack and this quest card. So if the Ragon was still alive, I could use this feature on only one hero to deal one damage to an enemy in the room. But in this case, a hero adjacent to this, sorry, a hero adjacent to the attached feature may draw a card from the clue deck. Then if, it, then if a hero chooses, they may take control of the clue card and discard it. So I will draw the first card from the clue deck. So sense of dread and that's probably the worst clue. So we'd have to resist four on purple. So we're gonna roll our three dice. Not purple, sorry, blue. Luckily we get the crit. So we do resist four, we're fine. So you may resist four to discard this card. Look at the bottom two cards of the clue deck. Choose one to resolve and shuffle the other back into the clue deck. Otherwise, discard this card and draw one card. So. It's not actually that bad. It can help you find a specific clue because there are two of them that you need to get half and half in order to complete your goal. So we can go ahead and take a look at the bottom two cards. Well, we don't want to find the breeze, so we're going to take the half scroll. This will go into play. So we must keep that. The weapon rack will stay in play. The sense of fatigue is now discarded along with the sense of dread. We must shuffle this other card back in the deck. So ideally we're gonna find another half scroll shortly. That'd be a lot of luck, but as you can see, there's a lot of clues. There's also quite a few features. So you're gonna to have to keep questing and exploring in order to find what you're looking for. Now, we have completed the turn and there's one thing I did forget to do during the hero turn was draw another card. Whenever, at the end of your turn, you can always draw a card. So it is now the start of our turn. So we went through threat turn, villain turn, quest turn. It's now hero turn. So we reactivate all of our stuff and we are good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up another room and then you should have a good idea as to how you're gonna be playing Alter Quest. I'm also gonna teach you how to search, which I'm going to do right now. As I'm right next to the weapon rack, I can interact, range is one. So I will search with might. But before that, we've taken some damage. We're gonna to wanna to roll the light. And you go one. Unfortunately, we don't have any more light, but it is what it is. So we search, we're gonna roll two dice. We get a crit. Another die, and we gain a focus. Now for our first success, we will then draw a search card. So this is pretty cool. We can use it or keep it because we can exhaust it, which is a pretty cool card. But as I'm gonna wrap this up soon, I'm gonna use it. When it's used, it gets chucked. I can set the altar dice to whatever I want, which is very cool. So I want one of those and I want one of those. Now for each success beyond what I rolled, I will gain a supply. So I'm gonna take another supply. I could spend the focus to gain the supply, 
But at this point, I'd like more focus. Please note that a hero or character can never have more than five focus. So we wanna we wanna do some cool stuff. Unfortunately, I'm not quite at the door space. I'm gonna move one, two, stand in front of the door to reveal the room. So this will be, I forgot to refresh these, my second action. So we'll open the room. One thing I'm gonna draw a feature card. It is the Blessed Fountain. So this will go into the center of the room. Draw our quest card. So when revealed, attach this card to the room's feature card. Then each hero might place one search token on this room's feature card to draw a search card. Now, that is one thing I actually did neglect to do. I often don't go back and search the same item repeatedly. After your first search, you must place a search token on the card. Now, why is that important? Because next time I searched it, I would need a minimum of two successes to draw a search card. Now, let's see what we can do. So we have this. So I'd like to get some more loot so we can place a search token on the card. So draw another one. So we have a potion of agility. That can definitely come in handy. And you then must draw a threat card. So we get another Raglan burner I will then spawn right here. So I'm going to continue my movement, which is one. Now I'm in a space of one. Let's see if I move here. One, two, three. Yeah, because I could have moved. One, two. I can move diagonally through three. One, two. Well, I'm far away. That's unfortunate. Well, I definitely want to defeat this guy. So let's see what Rowan can do. He's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six. He can choose a hero to move, a figure to move two spaces. I can move him closer, but I want to end my turn near the fountain. So I'm gonna choose myself to move two spaces. So that's what I can do. So I roll that. We would gain another supply. I'm on my last Billy, unfortunately, I'm not even within range, but we're gonna take a quick look at Cedrin's deck here. Ah, perfect, it's at the bottom. We'll take this card. We'll just imagine that I have this card. Now, I could play this if it's in my hand, Aluna's Wrath, which would let me attack with range of four. So I'd play the card. I use my blue stat, so I would be rolling three dice. Attack the Raglan. Now, if I wanted to feed him, kill him just this turn, I can also use supply to augment my roll. So I could use supply to roll an extra two dice, for example. Now, it wasn't the greatest. I'm also making a test here. So I can use that to add a crit. If I roll the die, we get another darkness. I can roll another one. So here we've got a nice roll. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Damage and a total of one, two, three focus. So I can spend one of these to turn one of these focus into a hit. I would also gain two focus back from the other two that are unused. And now that's enough to just poof, knock out the Raglan burner right away so that he doesn't get a chance to attack. Regain one of my supply. And that would be the end of my turn, we'd once again go through all of the activate effects and then restart our turn. Now the other thing I'm, I wanna go through just before we go any further, so we've gone over move, we've explained taking a card action such as triggering the attack, we've played an action card, we've, we haven't drawn a card from the deck, that's standard. Now rest action, another action would be to discard a supply and heal two damage, so that's actually you can do. And channel would be gaining focus as long as you're under five and setting a die to what you would like. So overall, pretty cool. That's all your hero action. Now the important thing to note is, how am I gonna finish the search? Well, you have to resolve the half scroll here. So while adjacent to the altar, 
You may discard this card along with a matching copy of Half Scroll to place one quest token upon the rules. So we will imagine that the altar has appeared at this point. We'll pretend that I gotten the other half scroll. It's actually close to the top. Then if I was adjacent to the altar, I could discard them, place the quest token on the card, and then I'd have to make my way back to the steps in order to win the game. And it's important to note, this can happen before the villain even spawns. For the villain to spawn, you must deplete the villain deck, so we can Imagine here, we'll make this look a little bit more realistic as we made some moves. Well, maybe this door isn't open yet. So we came in here a little later on the game. It's now time to activate. So we would have to resolve this villain card first. So we'd still have to do our resist. And that was a good one. We gained some focus. But we can't draw the villain card, so we immediately flip over the card. The villain spawns in the shadow space, and then they would activate, and you would have to follow through on the activate effect of their card. The villain has two armor and eight per player hit points. Now, you don't necessarily have to beat the villain to win, as you saw the victory conditions of the searches get to the stairs. But hey... They can mess you up, especially if there are other threat cards in there. Now, if you're wondering about the threat tokens, just read what would occur if... Oh, uh, sorry. Let's just take a look, actually, a little closer. So for the threat tokens, before a minion with threat tokens would activate, you'd have to resolve a resistance roll on orange, which is fortitude. And there you have it. That's really how you're going to be playing Alter Quest. You're going to be playing cards from your hand, rolling the dice, and trying to complete your objective. I hope that this nice overview on how to play gives you all the basics for the game. There's a lot more that you can do, especially with other players in terms of chaining stuff together, as you can see with all the different exhaust effects. Uh, the one thing we haven't gone over, and I'll find it to show you, if, for example, I had a Luna's Blessing in my control area, so this is an ongoing card, it would can be played on myself or another hero. I can use it, and just like a search card, it gets discarded, or I could continue to have it, so I could exhaust it to add an extra result to the test, which means it is very, very powerful. Because, for example, you know, with this and this, you can be adding up to two successes every turn to a roll. And as you can see, getting lots of successes, especially crits, can really make the game easier. So there you have it. That's how to play Alter Quest. Now Julie and I are going to be coming back at you with our review of the game. So Alter Quest, what did you think of the game? And I'm very much eager to hear your thoughts on this one. We started out with Street Masters, the first of the MDS system, and she wasn't all that into the theme, but ended up really enjoying the game. We moved on to Brook City. I think the police theme uh, really did it for you more than uh, the fighting style from like Street Masters, mm -hmm. well not Street Masters, Street Fighter and Final Fight. But here we've got your jam. This is fantasy. You've got upgrades from a campaign. You're playing cards. You love your card games. What did you think of Alter Quest? Well, this actually uh, reminded me a lot of uh, two games that I've, we've talked about and that I've enjoyed, uh, Folklore. Uh, with the from the storytelling element of it where you know there's there's a lot of story on this game and you pick uh, the path you want to pick uh, you want to you want to follow and then you go to the back of the book and you read that and, and your decisions your quest is altered based on the decisions that you take uh, so that's very reminiscent for well, me well not well. not as much as folklore though I'd say no, folk, no, but folklore it, has got a lot more than that but, but it's got the same feel yes and uh, and then for the miniatures and the, the types of villains and the theming it reminds me of descent which i've spoken about a lot that i really enjoyed so so there's a lot of positive elements there and just to catch up viewers in case you skipped ahead part of our intro this is a full campaign review we did play the entire out of luxon campaign so what is she she discussing uh, right now is the story element of that campaign book yes um you know, and as for the uh, the I mean the the minis are cool. I enjoyed uh, the different the different minis. I think uh, what really added to the game, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, since we're talking about the miniatures, I found that these ones are a lot more detailed than 
the other MDS system games, mm -hmm. as well as having the those feature elements and the doors, the, the three-dimensional things that were on the board, I really think gives it a lot of pop that I really enjoy. Yeah, I can say I, I definitely like that uh, fountain uh, feature. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty. Uh, and the dice, cool, pretty, teal-colored, clear dice. That was a... Yes, and we have a lot of them. I know some people have asked me if I'm going to be selling them because we have a lot of them. Surprisingly enough, we sometimes roll just about all of them. So I'm keeping them. <laughs> I would hope so. You keep stealing my dice. I don't know why. Like you don't have enough. In any case. I need more. Mm -hmm. Send them to me. You know, if you really want, send us an email, find my contact. I will take your extra Alter Quest dice off your hands. <laughs> I uh, so I enjoyed the I mean I enjoyed my character uh, I played the I can't remember her name but uh, uh, Mirelle Duval she uh, she's uh, a vampire yes uh, and I had uh, an ally again I'm really bad with Quella. Name. Quella yes I don't remember her last name though I don't she might not she have had one claw I... claw hands that's all yes. I remember somewhere on the cover <laughs> you can uh, see her. so I mean. Uh, they were they were a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed the you know the equipment upgrades make it make it fun as well and and the upgrades to your skill. Um, and just know that would not come into play in just a one-off game. Yeah. So you can play this just as a one-off or you Why just would you want to. This is so much more fun I find as a campaign. Uh, because you want to play the game with some friends oh, during a game quickly, night. Yeah. yeah, you want to take it out during game night and you're not sure if you're going to get it back to the table. Yeah. So uh, I mean. It's, uh, I, I thought this was more enjoyable than the other versions. Uh, that's me personally. Um, I thought, like you said, the features add to it. It didn't feel like I was playing Brook City or Street Masters. Um, so that's a positive for me. And even though we enjoyed the other games, it's a positive that this is a very different game to me. No, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with the design that the Sadler brothers are able to do with this deck system because... All of the games do feel different. Now, I have to say, I think Alter Quest is sort of, in terms of at least text on the cards, has pushed this system to the limits. There's a couple of times where I miss some text because it's like almost a paragraph long as to what we have to resolve with different conditions. But the biggest difference about this game is where you're going to be trying to combo cards out of your hand, you do not do that as much in Alter Quest. And that's not a bad thing. There will be cer certain times in the game where you're gonna be playing as many cards as you can. But if you're playing Street Masters, you wanna get your tactics, and I forget the name of those cards in uh, Brook City, Those the cards that you can constantly exhaust and use to really uh, enhance your abilities. You're gonna be trying to play as many cards as possible and then reset your hand to get off crazy combos because of the exploration element in this game you're not always going to be doing that you're really going to be thinking more cooperatively strategically trying to investigate the rooms and get to your objective above all else and then once you have opportunities to resolve that objective or you know a whole bunch of bad guys pop up in a room well that's when uh, all the fun of trying to drop your whole hand uh, or use your hand as effectively as possible is going to come into play. And I really liked a lot of the items that you're able to carry through the game. For example, I got that quick route early on and I kept that thing for the entire game because it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that aspect. And you mentioned the, uh, the equipment upgrades, which uh, was new for us. We actually haven't played the story mode for uh, Street Masters or Book City. They do have some uh, upgrade cards that we got to use, but the equipment makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I think a lot bigger difference than you or I thought, and I'll let you elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, no, but I, I mean, you got the great axe uh, faster than I think I got my upgrade to. No, you, you got yours, but mine, I took the big two-handers because you had your awesome shield as a yeah. Marais. Uh, so, or Miral, mm, don't know how to pronounce it. Duval. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I find for, uh, it's funny because depending on how your character plays, Jason was playing a character that heals a little bit more in mine. Uh, had a little bit more search uh, functionality. Oh, you had her. search and smash. <laughs> she became smash with time, but she was more search. Um, it was search allowed me to become smash, put it that way. Uh, I was going to say search uh, in this... Oh, yeah, you're, you're more of the tank. I think Quella would be the more direct smash mage, which you almost picked, but I was surprised yeah. when you picked the, uh, the armored knight. <laughs> well, she seemed a little bit more balanced. 
uh, in any case, uh, searching and getting those search cards uh, definitely did have more of an impact. I think if we didn't have the allies, the supply would have been a little bit more important uh, uh, to yeah, us. Well, speaking about allies and supply, I had Rowan as my ally, who pretty much gave us a free supply every turn, which was huge. Kind of ridiculous in a campaign, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's and, and even Quella allowed us to smashy smash quite a few times that were allowing me to, you know, you kill, kill the monsters, allowing me to, to do other stuff with my main character. So, um, you know... To me, this uh, this is if you if you like fantasy games, I think this is a very well rounded. It's a fun game. Uh, I agree with you that there was some frustration um, on on the amount of rules re related to different quests. Uh, a lot of you know, and I, I kept saying, didn't we just do that? But it was you know something added on to something added on to that, something added yeah, on. So I, I think I think that was that be my only real complaint uh, is that that element of the game and i have to say like i have some other complaints that I, i'll talk about now but they don't detract from my enjoyment of the game sorry not right now I, I want i know there was another element you wanted to talk about specifically the allies and using them in the in the campaign setting so we've always enjoyed playing with allies in the other mds games you're always really pushed to your limits and if you want to have a better chance of succeeding in Street Masters and Brook City having an ally is definitely going to put you, you know, just a little bit more on the side of being able to win. Now, I would say that in a one-off game of Alter Quest, having an ally is fine. Using allies for the entire campaign, I think that made the game a little too easy for us. Yeah, well, maybe not, I would say, too easy, but it may, definitely made it easy. Well, there was, yeah. There was a couple of times when we, we'd really wrapped up everything and we were almost just waiting for, you know, the villain to spawn. We could have been doing more exploration, but we kind of took the safe route, made the villain spawn, beat them. The last two missions went by incredibly quickly. Now, we did get some serious luck as to what we were drawing from those quest decks that helped speed up the game, which was awesome. But as I was mentioning, having Rowan giving us supply of return, I mean, we ended the first game and this is also because i didn't know the rule very well but i'll talk sorry i know the rules i didn't know all the little aspects very well which i'll clarify in just a moment we had about 20 supply we we had our pick of weapons we had like two we were upgrading our cards right off the bat so instead of just one upgrade we each had like two upgrades it, it was pretty crazy so our power level was just going like this and having the allies there really just made it so that we were we eventually just bump broke over the curve our first mission we even ended up like i was close to dying at a few points in the first mission so allies one off is a good idea maybe if you're going to just jump right into a campaign and not play some one-off games start with allies but i would not be afraid to just put them back into the box once you got a feel for the system and that's our first experience with uh, with this ever in the MDS system. Anything you want to add to that at all? No, I think you covered it. So I, I also want to comment positively on the world. Uh, we get a little bit of a taste of it here in the world of Aritica that was created by the Sadler brothers. It definitely has its own flavor to it. The fact that vampires are so present, the, the raglanders and the frocks, while they definitely feel similar to other, you know, fantasy species, they're... They're still different and I'd love to see more of the lore of the world and I really enjoyed how the end of this campaign sets us right into the expansion ruins of Ark Spire and I think that there's a lot of great production value around the game uh, the miniatures are the best that I've seen from Blacklist games hands down they're better than Street Masters minis they're more detailed and I'm really happy to see that because I like where Blacklist Games is going from where they started to where they are now. But my major complaints with the game is the rulebook and primarily the layout of the rulebook. I will give the Sadler Brothers full credit. The rules are all there. You can set up the game. You're going to understand what you're doing in the game. You'll understand what you need to do in the quest. But Finding the information in a logical sense, be like, okay, this is my turn. I'd like to know everything about what I can do in my turn. It's broken up. It's difficult to find on the fly and was very annoying. So I really 
I'm not a big fan of the rule book. I'm happy that the rules are all there and they at least make sense. Unlike some rule books from a game that I've heard of, well, heard about, having not got a chance to play it yet, it's behind us where everyone said the rule is, well, the rule book is an absolute mess. Whereas Alter Quest could be better. You're gonna fight with the system a little bit, but once you got it, you're not gonna have any issues. For example, where supply is set up and it gives you the rules for supply, I don't think really makes all that much sense. So we didn't even use the supply tokens for the entire first mission. And they would have been very useful at certain points, especially when I was two hit points away from dying. Because if you have one hero die, well, you lose the entire mission. Now, the other issue I had with the rule book is the campaign upkeep in the rule book is different than the campaign upkeep in the back of the of the uh, campaign book. And we decided to follow the rule book, which was probably for the best, because with the insane amount of supply that we had, we would have been so geared out, it wouldn't have been funny. Could have been at the point where we would upgraded our weapons, had like four or five extra trinkets, because we had 20 supply, and in the back of the campaign book, it says, for every three supply, take an equipment card. So, I mean, that's what, about six pieces of equipment that we could add. So three upgrades each, carry that through multiple games. Well, you'd be decked out in just about any situation you can imagine. And those equipment cards did make a big difference. They really evened out a lot of our stats and made it so that allies weren't as big of a factor. They definitely were the icing on the cake that pushed us over the top. I don't think there's really anything else I want to say about the game itself. I've talked about the rule book. Love the miniatures. I love the art as well. So there's really a lot to love about Alter Quest. I like it. I like the playmat feel. I like the idea for the playmat. So, but I found it really hard to find some of the elements on it, like where the spawning happens. Like it's it's dark. It doesn't add much i find to it i would have liked a little bit more detail well, we could have used the board the playmat is an extra add-on so and just to clarify because we neglected to do it earlier we are reviewing the main alter quest game if you've seen our unboxing videos you'll be able to find links to those on the channel we do have everything for the game we only use the core box elements for this review we did not use any of the stretch goals or anything from Ruins of Ark Inspire. We really wanted to keep the experience tailored to what's in the box. And one thing I will say with regards to the feature cards, especially with the quest. Now, if you're playing a one-off quest, you may want to take those feature cards from the stretch goals as well as from the Ruins of Ark Inspire, shuffle them in and have a giant stack, but it can make your quest incredibly long because you often have to find the altar. So if the altar is in the last two cards of the deck, you wanna keep that in mind. So you may wanna consider just swapping out different cards to give yourself a different feel depending on the game and the quest. So I think I've summed it up. Anything that you wanna add nope. about altar quest? So Julie, what is your score for the game? I think I've given my score first the last couple of times. So I think it's your turn. So I'm gonna give this a seven and a half. I really think this game is close to, to an eight. My frustration with the rule books and the technical layout of the rule book is definitely knocking it to below that, uh, below that level. It's something that uh, with all the different games we have in our collection, I really like well-organized rule books because it makes taking a game off the shelf that I've been playing in a few months, getting it back to the table a lot easier when I'm just like, yeah, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. And I'll be like, where's that rule again? So I completely agree. It's a seven and a half for me. Uh, just the the way the game plays and uh, and uh, the the storytelling element of it bring it to a seven and a half for me. All right. So what time is it now, Julie? It's time to remind people to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. And you can take a look down below in the video description to find links to all of our social media feeds: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see pictures from what may be upcoming on the channel, some new arrivals, pictures of the full campaign of Out of Luxon for Alter Quest. We've got lots of those that are gonna be up on those feeds. You'll also find a link to a playlist in the video description for all of the coverage that we've done on Blacklist Games. Because quite a lot actually. <laughs> 
So on that note, I think it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our fellow adventurer. We have to keep playing games. Keep playing games. We'll keep playing this one. We've got a lot more content. And with the way this campaign ended, I would like to uh, get to the ruins of Arkenspire. And we did neglect to remind them of one thing, though. What's that? Don't forget, there will be two videos popping up in front of us. So over here, you're going to have a link to our most recent video. And the one over here will be to, uh, well, you know what? Maybe I'll make it the Blacklist Games playlist as well. You got it down below in the video description. You got it there. You can't miss it. And now what do we need to remind everyone to do? I don't know. I don't know where your mind's going. Got to remind them too. keep playing games. We've said that already.